In the words of the legendary chef and my personal hero, Anthony Bourdain, food is everything we are. It's an extension of a nationalist feeling, ethnic feeling, your personal history, your province, your region, your tribe, your grandma. It's inseparable from those from the get-go. Welcome to Every Dish, A Story, a podcast about a place of food in our lives and what it meant to our ancestors. I'm your host, Kat, and I'm going to take you to a new location every two weeks to connect to who we are. An American poet, Hugh Cahoon, once jokingly said, let them eat cake. I would rather have be strong enough. Welcome to Every Dish's Story, episode 13. I'm your host, Kat, and today we're going to my home country of Russia. Beef stroganoff is one of the few Russian dishes that have received official world recognition. There are almost more variations of this favorite dish than there are legends about it. There are several versions of the origin of beef stroganoff, but all of them are, one way or another, connected with the name of Count Grigory Alexandrovich Stroganov. The story of beef stroganoff began in the middle of the 18th century. The cook of the Stroganov family patiently cut beef fillets into thin strips. Count Grigory Alexandrovich demanded to invent a dish not just tasty, but one that did not require much chewing. You see, at that time the elderly gentleman had practically no teeth left. According to another version, the main character of the story was the son of Count Stroganov, the Governor General Alexander Grigorievich, a generous and very hospitable man. He used to arrange the so-called open tables, during which any decently dressed and well-spoken person could enter the house and dine with the Count. The task of the French chef in charge of dinners was to come up with a dish to be served en masse. Thus became beef stroganoff, which is quick to make and well divided into portions. And there's another one, which also has to do with the Count's family, but just a different member of family. Pavel Alexandrovich Stroganov, also a representative of the respected clan, was once on his way to his northern fiefdom. The road was long and cold, and the meat and the supplies froze solid. In the halt, personal chef could only whittle a piece of ice-cold tenderloin and stew slices on the fire. Regardless of which of the Stroganovs gave the name to the famous dish, beef stewed in a sour creamy sauce became a classic first in Russian and then in Soviet cuisine. The Stroganov family is famous in the scientific world for having given a huge library collected over 200 years by barons of Stroganov clan to Tomsk University. As I mentioned earlier, as an exceptionally wealthy man, Alexander Grigorievich Stroganov, akin to the custom of the nobles at the time, kept an open table in Odessa. What that meant was that any well-dressed citizen could come to the specially allocated for this purpose room in the Count's mansion for dinner. For such an open table, Stroganov's chef invented a peculiar Russian-French dish, fried small pieces of meat in a sauce. It was very unique in a way that the sauce was not served separately as is customary in Paris, but the meat was actually stewed in it. The dish was quite quick and easy to prepare, was easy to divide into portions. It was suitable for unpretentious garnish in the form of boiled potatoes or boiled rice, and most importantly, it was delicious. Over time, the ubiquitous adessants, who actually invented the name for it themselves, spread the fame and the recipe of the dish all over Russia and abroad. Beef stroganoff is a true mix of French and Nizhny Novgorod, as the joke says. More precisely, without irony, mixture of French and Russian. Beef stroganoff is a combination of a French word with a Russian proper name and a well-known surname. The French bof, which means beef, and the surname stroganoff. Literally, beef stroganoff is simply stroganoff-style beef. And it's very easy to prepare. You just cut the meat into pieces and stew in sour cream. <laughs> then there's also another version of the origin of beef stroganoff. Allegedly, the recipe was born not in Russia, but in France. The author of the German book about the stroganoff dynasty, Tatiana Maternich, Ne Vasilchikova, writes about it. She claims that Count Sergei Stroganov gave the recipe to the chef of the famous Maxim restaurant in Paris. One could agree with that, but the Maxim restaurant opened in 1893, and five years before that the French culinary guide was published, where, among other recipes, there was already beef stroganoff. One of the most fantastic legends, however, says that in fact beef stroganoff was invented by Alexander Grigorievich's father, a prominent Russian diplomat Grigory Alexandrovich Stroganov, who improved the recipe for an old Spanish dish, 
which he learned from his second wife, Juliana Maria Louise Carolina Sofia Dionhausen, who inherited from her mother. In the Spanish version, the meat was stewed not in sour cream or cream, but in gravy of fried onions and tomatoes. Of course, to all appearances, beef stroganoff is not in the strict sense a northern dish. It has predecessors. Culinary masterpieces in general rarely come to light, as they say, out of nowhere. While culinary historians tend to attribute the invention of beef stroganoff to uh, two stroganoff counts and their French chefs. And probably the most truthful version is the one of who lived in Odessa in the 19th century, and his chef, André Dupont, who is said to have created beef stroganoff for the elderly count who lived to be 93 and whose teeth could no longer handle large pieces of meat towards the end of his life. So, who were these stroganoff people? Well, the origins of the stroganoff clan stretch back just before Ivan the Terrible Reign, according to the Stroganov Foundation, which is tasked with safeguarding Russia's cultural legacy. Trade, property acquisition, and salt mining helped the family amass wealth in the 1300s. Anika Fedorovich, the matriarch of the Stroganov family, made a daring play by conquering most of Siberia and allied herself to the Russian ruler Ivan the Terrible in exchange for long-term land grants. The Stroganov family was effectively in charge of all Siberia as a result of this. Stroganovs remained loyal to the Tsarist rule well into the 17th century, and they reaped the financial benefits of their connections. Count Pavel Stroganov was born in Paris to a Russian aristocratic family that was on the move throughout Europe. Stroganov and Princess Ekaterina Trubitskaya's only child, Pavel, is mostly forgotten in the annals of the Russian history. Despite his low-key demeanor, he served as a diplomat in Britain and a general in the Napoleonic Wars, for which he was awarded the St. George Cross, Russia's highest military medal. A combination of Russian and French influences permeated Count Stroganov's diet, as Russian nobility frequently employed French chefs while maintaining a taste for traditional Russian cuisine. The Russian upper class was extremely well off under the reign of the Tsars. They often had apartments in Paris, which they loved, and they maintained a bicultural atmosphere at home in Russia. They employed French servants and governesses and, of course, French chefs in their households and sent their children to French schools. Both at home and at social occasions, they favored French to Russian. Tolstoy, a count in his own right, wrote War and Peace in both French and Russian languages, sure that his audience would actually be conversant in both. It's safe to say that among these aristocratic clans, the Stroganovs were one of the most honorable and rich, with a vast estate that spanned from St. Petersburg to the Ural Mountains. The last of the Stroganovs, Count Pavel Alexander Stroganov, died without a male heir, bringing an end to a long and illustrious family line. However, a distant relative was allowed to inherit the family's title and property from his oldest daughter, who married a distant relative. That's how we have uh, another version of the legend, is that the chef of Pavel named his dish after his patron, but adding French mustard and Russian sour cream to the mix, according to the cookbook Taste of Russia. The Stroganov family enjoyed opulence far into the 19th century, and they left behind a substantial art collection, as well as the Stroganov Palace in St. Petersburg, which is now a museum. If you'd like, you can even visit the Stroganov Palace. It was declared a national treasure in 1917 and added to the Russian Museum of the Soviet Union in 1990. The most popular recipe in Russia today is to cut a beef fillet into long flat strips and then put it in a bowl, sprinkle with salt and pepper and cover for an hour or an hour and a half. Then you fry the flour in butter, cool it, dissolve in meat broth Add one tablespoon of mustard, a little pepper, stir it all up and boil. Then you fry the beef on a heated pan and put it in the sauce. And then add some sour cream, fried onions and boil for another two or three minutes. Beef stroganoff is then served with boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, sprinkled with chopped parsley or dill. Interestingly, the original recipe doesn't call for mushrooms, although it's really difficult to find a recipe without mushrooms these days. I myself cook it with mushrooms because I like the aromas that they add to the dish. 
in France, beef stroganoff is prepared in two main variants. The first is that you cut beef fillet into small strips, quickly fry on a high heat until brown and put it in the colander. Then you reduce the heat, add the sliced onion, tomato sauce and fry a little bit with a tablespoon of butter, cream and two glasses of meat broth, salt, pepper and then you chuck the meat into the sauce. The second version differs from the first is that the mustard is added to the sauce. Meat then placed in the sauce and heated slowly over low heat on the stove or in the oven for half an hour. And the dish is then served with boiled potatoes or even boiled rice. And I know in American cuisine they like to use egg noodles. So Bistroganov uh, not only became a sensation in Russia but also China. Shanghai, dubbed the Paris of the East in the 1920s, was a hotbed of the Shanghainese fashion in the early years of the 20th century. Due to the fact that the Russia's first wave of immigrants, who had just left the brutality of the Tsar regime, either didn't know or didn't want to promote this cuisine in the United States. However, reminiscent ex-upper-class immigrants, they began putting up eateries enabling fellow expats to enjoy their memories of the old country. Former Imperial Ballet dancers started the Russian Tea Room in New York City in 1927, and it's opened its doors to the public in 1928. After World War II, Lev Strogonov's popularity skyrocketed after the first recipe appeared in the English language cookbook in 1932. Veterans were more open to trying new foods because of their experiences serving abroad. Some of them went on to have illustrious careers as food editors, journalists, and chefs who helped to reshape American cooking. Meanwhile, families migrated out of the city and dinner parties became a more popular social event. For many hosts, Bistroganov was a favorite and the centerpiece of their menus, making it a popular choice for premium diamond establishments as well. Various additives such as tomato paste, Worcestershire sauce and condensed cream of mushroom soup were included to the recipe over time. I refer you to YouTube channel Cheddar Cats and you will find a recipe for a modern version of Bistroganov with mustard and Worcestershire sauce and tomato paste and mushrooms. On this note, I'd like to end our little excursion into the history of Bistroganov and its influence on Russian cuisine. As always, thank you so much for being with me. Continue to eat well, train hard, love cats, and please recycle your garbage when you can. Also, wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are safe and you are healthy. Bye-bye for now, and I'll be back on April 7th with a new journey.